Whoa, that's my hair. I think since Mainnet launched, it has like... Today the video is about the life cycle endpoint we're offering. This is an amazing thing and that's also a diffuse differentiator. It is an endpoint that will give you the full life cycle story of your transaction. What does that mean? So we talked in a previous video about the fact that when you send a transaction, it can be included in a block, it can go through the irreversibility, or it could never be included in a block somehow, right? There's some situations which make it never settle. Well, maybe you want to know about these things. So when you query the transaction lifecycle endpoint of the Diffuse platform, we will tell you if the transaction is inside a block. Was it executed? Did it fail? There's two modes of failure, soft fail, hard fail. We will give you the trace for the failure. We will give you all the stack trace. We will also give you the console output. So as a contract developer, if you put print statements in there, well, Diffuse is the only platform will give you the output from the console. So you can do debugging in prod. Don't do that. Test on your testnet before. But the other awesome thing that it does is it tracks the whole life cycle of deferred transaction deferred transaction and that is unique so it means if your transaction made it in, in the blockchain as a deferred it's deferred for five days okay so the life cycle would indicate and show you the transaction that is not yet executed is it in a block it's in a block in a way it's waiting it's in the blockchain memory and it's waiting for execution in the future but many things can happen to that transaction they can be cancelled they can be executed and they can expire if they're eventually executed then you want to know if you query the lifecycle endpoint we'll say this was a transaction deferred at that point in that block it is now executed in that block but that might change, remember, because of micro forks. So if you query many times, you will know the state in which block was executed. If you, you can know the head of the block or you, it'll indicate if this one is now irreversible. If the execution is irreversible and if the creation is irreversible, because there's two steps now. But there's also something else that can happen. It can be canceled. If you call the cancel delay action on the system contract, you can also cancel the transaction that was in flight, meaning it was in the memory of the blockchain, waiting for its delay to expire and then be executed. And uh, so if you do that, you have yet another life cycle event, right? You have the creation and then the cancellation. If you get that, you'll never get execution because it's canceled. But the cancellation can also, you know, be part of fork. So you want to know that. So if you query the life cycle and you have a canceled transaction that was deferred, you'll get the deferred where it was deferred, whether it's irreversible or not, and then the cancellation, whether this one is irreversible or not, right? Or it's gonna be switched for an execution, that could happen. So by querying the lifecycle endpoint, you'll have all the state machine of the deferred transaction, the lifecycle also of a normal transaction that was just pushed and executed and whether it's irreversible or not. And the last case is expiration. If your transaction was in the memory of the blockchain, but it was systematically, even after uh, the delay was passed, let's say five seconds, after five seconds, no block producer ran it no block producer ran it for, I think there's a minimum there, 10 minutes, something like that. If it expires, then it's going to be purged out of the blockchain. You want to know that, right? If your transaction was just expired, no one accepted to run it, that will be most of the time because of either failed execution or subjective rejection by the block producers of that transaction because whatever, some reasons, okay? So I think that covers it, like the transaction lifecycle endpoint, the unique feature of the Diffuse platform. The Diffuse platform is actually the only system around that allows you to track deferred transaction. If you go to eosq.app, you'll notice all that rich information is displayed. If you select a transaction that was deferred, you can navigate to the previous transaction who created it, who canceled it, who, who executed it, and which blocks all these things happen. eosq is actually a great demo website of the power of the Diffuse platform. Everything under eosq.app, which is our block explorer, is powered by Diffuse. EOSQ is just a front end. So take a look and uh, if you have any questions, join our Telegram channel, the Diffuse API. We're going to have an awesome time together. I hope you're all on board and have a, long, a lot of fun building on EOS as we are. Hey, bye.